Well, hello, everybody. My name is Kevin McDonald, and you know, I was just thinking as I was reviewing old CDs of Positive Talk Radio and Spirit Talk and Kevin McDonald Presents and all that stuff. And I was thinking, does anybody really know the story behind the show? Behind how this all began? I don't think so. I don't think I've ever told the story in total the way that I'm going to tell it tonight. So I guess I should start at the beginning. I am a high school graduate. Uh, I graduated from high school in 1975. I fell into eventually uh, the restaurant business. Started as a graveyard dishwasher at Denny's, if you can imagine. And uh, I really enjoyed the restaurant business. And so I uh, uh, worked at Denny's for several years and and became a waiter and became a cook and was a host and a busboy. And, and uh, then uh, uh, over a period of time, I joined the, the opening team. In those days, Denny's was a real going concern. And they had uh, restaurants opening up all over the country. So they had actually what was called an opening team. And we would go. And we would set up a new restaurant, and we would hire the staff, and we'd train the staff and do all of that. Well, I, you know, I really enjoyed that, but I really wanted to get into restaurant management. And so I did that as well. I became an assistant manager at Denny's. And unfortunately, in those days, it didn't work out very well because they paid like nothing. And uh, they worked you, you know, it was a 24-hour restaurant, so they worked you a ton of hours. And so, ultimately, I ended up leaving management with them, going back to becoming a waiter with them. And uh, then I went to work at uh, the Doubletree Plaza Hotel in Seattle and, and uh, was their first employee of the month and and uh, became a, a captain opening wine and doing tableside Caesar salads and, and then became a waiter and then became a, uh, um, a, a, a room service captain and and then I uh, uh, worked in the bar and became a bartender and did all that and had a great time and, and then went back into restaurant management with a company that's no longer in business. Most of the companies that I worked with are no longer in business. Of course, that's kind of the way the restaurant business works. And um, But it, it, needless to say, I, I, had, I created a career in the restaurant business. And then uh, um, after I became a general manager of several properties, several $3 million properties, in fact, um, I went into food service sales and then uh, uh, worked nationally as a uh, national chicken salesman. Uh, that's right. I went around the country selling dead chicken to people, which was a great deal of fun. And, and so well, my career up until I was in my early 40s was pretty well set. I'd done well. I had a house, had a wife. I met my wife in college at Green River when I was at the Doubletree, and, and we had a couple of kids, a couple of great kids, Travis and John, and uh, my life was pretty much set. And then one day, I was with my wife and my family at Thanksgiving at my sister's house. And somehow we got onto a religious discussion about life, life after death, what is there, what is, what, what's it all about. And, of course, the uh, uh, Lutheran Christian uh, uh, denomination has got a real clear understanding of what they believe is all about life and all about life after death and, and that you die and go to heaven or you go to hell, depending upon your belief structure and yada, yada, yada. And, you know, it just didn't satisfy me. Just wasn't right. Just didn't seem good. Didn't seem like that's the way it is. So... We left uh, Thanksgiving dinner and we went to a friend of ours house. Her name is Cindy, and, and she had a new friend whose name is Mark. Now, Mark is uh, worked with uh, disabled children, and he had long hair, and he had a, a real interesting perspective on life. And so I started to talk while we were sitting there having a, a, a beer together, and I, I said, you know, I just don't get it. I don't get what they were talking about as far as, the, the structure of life after death and what this is all about and all of that. I just don't understand it. It doesn't make sense to me. And both of them looked at each other. And they said, you know, we've been having that conversation ourselves. And I said, uh, what? 
conversation. And they said, well, we have been wondering and toying with the idea of what is there? What is out there? What is this life really all about? And they didn't have the answers, and neither did I. And, and But the, the, I was so naive and so raw at the time, I didn't even have any idea what meditation meant or was. See, in the, in the Lutheran religion, meditation was bad. Psychics were bad. Uh, energy sp uh, people were bad. They, they just something you didn't do, and so I, I, but I was intrigued, and so we started to get together on a regular basis, and we started to do some research. And one of the things that Mark said to me was, "Okay, this is what I want you to do." There was a metaphysical bookstore in the neighborhood. He said, "I want you to go to that store, and I want you to." Walk up and down the aisles and 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 pick out a book that speaks to you. And I said, what? He said, no, I want you to do this. I want you to go to the metaphysical bookstore and pick out a book that speaks to you, that literally jumps off the shelf and says, buy me, you need to read me. And so, a little incredulous, I decided I would, you know, honor him. And uh, I went to this bookstore. And I walked up and down the aisles. And sure enough, there was a book that was just published. And it was published by a doctor, Michael Newton. And it was called Journey of Souls. It leapt off the shelf into my hands. And I looked at it and I said, you know, I need to have this book. So I bought this book. And I read the book cover to cover in like three days. Beautiful book, well written. It was it, it, basically the premise of the book is this: Michael, Doctor Michael Newton is a hypnotherapist. He'd worked with people for a long time to quit smoking, to modify their behavior and stuff. He really was kind of an agnostic and didn't believe in any of the spiritual aspects of life. And if you want to, you can go on YouTube and you can uh, download his some of his talks about the work that he's done. Well, he interviewed literally thousands of people over time and uh, put them into a, a, what he called super hypnosis, which is a very deep hypno hypnotic state. Now, the, the very deep hypnotic state superseded what you would think of when uh, you have a hypnotist who's on stage with people and they can get them to just talk like a chicken and do stuff like that. This was completely different. This is way deeper. And what he found was that there was commonality in the descriptions that all of his patients were making about what life was like after we die. Not only when we die, but life after we die. What life is like on the other side and then coming back. Yes, he does believe in reincarnation, as do I. And so I read that book, and, and um, Mark, Cindy, Jennifer, and I started uh, meeting on a regular basis. They taught me, Mark w was aware of meditation, so he taught me a little bit about that. And we started talking about what is actually going on that isn't being talked about. People aren't talking about spirituality, aren't, weren't talking at that time, people weren't talking about energy work. And, and how it all flows together to make a wonderful uh, uh, experience for everyone. And so nobody was talking about any of that. Well, as we get down the road a little bit, we find a spiritual place that uh, teaches meditation and teaches people to talk with somebody that's called your spirit guide. Now, I'd heard of angels and I'd heard of you know, uh, uh, Jesus and, and stuff, but I never heard the term spirit guide before. And it became clear to me that in the, in working with these folks that, uh, spirit guides are people that look out after us and they may be angels. They may be somebody else on the other side, but they're there to support us in this endeavor that we call life. So, um, and I remember this vividly. We were in the process of doing all this when Mark said to me one day, we were talking on the phone, and he said, this information is too important. It's just too damned important. we got to get the word out. We need to have a television show. <laughs> and I said, 
Okay. Um, television show. That would be good. Um, and uh, but, uh, it, but as I have come to understand, your intuition is an important part of your life. And my intuition said, okay, well, let's do some research. So I did. And I found out that, yeah, okay, we could do a television show, but it would be on public broadcasting and there would be um, virtually no audience and it was really, really expensive. And so I said to myself, can we do radio? And how would we go about doing that? So I went on the dial and I looked at uh, different radio stations. I knew that I couldn't afford the 100,000 watt radio stations. And I didn't even know that you could do, uh, the, I assumed that all that was programmed and, and, and done at the corporate level and, and that they paid the hosts and all that. So I didn't know how we could get that done. But anyway, I found a radio station called KLAY in Lakewood, Tacoma. And I called them up. And I happened to get the program director. It was a real stro small station. There were only three employees. But they had a reach of 5,000 watts in the Tacoma, Seattle area. And I said, you know, I, I, I don't know whether this is even possible, but I've got, a, I've got an idea that I'd like to pursue for a radio show. And how would one go about even finding whether or not you could even get that done? And he said, well, you know, we have what's called block programming. Block programming is where you can... Uh, uh, you can buy an hour basically. And in that hour, it's yours. You can do whatever you want. You can uh, uh, put up commercials. You can do anything that you like. And uh, so um, I said, well, how much do you charge for an hour? And he said, well, we charge a hundred bucks an hour. Wow. That's a lot of money. But I did the math. And what I was operating under was the assumption that I could sell 12 minutes of advertising per hour. At 12 minutes of advertising at 50 bucks a minute, that'd be $600 an hour. Uh, the station charges me 100. Well, I would make 500 bucks an hour. That makes sense to me in my business mind. And being a sales guy, I figured, hell, I can sell that. That's easy. So... Um, I called Mark and I said, well, you know, we can't do TV. He said, oh, but I said, we can do radio. He said, really? How? And I explained it to him. And uh, so we embarked upon putting together a program that we called Spirit Talk. Now, in order to put that together, obviously, it was we needed somebody to pay the money. And that the money person was going to be me. And if I couldn't find somebody to, to share the cost via advertising, I was going to have to eat the entire hundred bucks per hour. And so we went about searching, um, uh, different metaphysical places to see if people would be interested in supporting the program. And we, and we found some support. We found enough support that, that encouraged us to be able to go and sign a contract with K K L A Y. Now, we decided that we were going to do Tuesday and Thursday nights at um, from 7 to 9. And uh, that we would talk about spiritual matters. We would talk about uh, meditation and, and stuff. Well, in the process of us looking around for um, individuals that could support us, we ran into a gal by the name of Kim Miller. Now, Kim Miller became one of my lifelong best friends. She is a psychic medium, and she was uh, appointed in our direction by the owner of this facility who said, well, you know, if you're going to do a radio show, you have got to have her on. Got to. And so um, I had Mark and uh, a friend of his uh, go see Kim, and do, and Kim was going to do a reading for them. Well, they came back with glowing reports, including the fact that um, Mark's friend, um, she read for his uh, grandfather. And his grandfather made a reference to, and Kim didn't understand this at the time, 
she he made a reference to uh, um, um, liquor in the bathroom or liquor in the bathtub, something like that. And he and nobody got that, and so they were like, "Well, that's I don't get that." But then when he went home and he talked to his mom, he said, "She said, well, that is." In fact, what he did in the 30s during Prohibition, he did bathtub gin. And so we were sold. We believed that Kim was the person that that we wanted. To, our first guest, somebody that we really felt positive about. So uh, we had Kim on the show, and <laughs> it was so funny because this is a small radio station, very small. And they sold us the line that if you put out a number for calls, you probably won't get any. And they sold it, told us it's because people don't like to call. But the reality is there weren't very many people listening. So when we had Kim Miller on and we said we we're going to do readings and we're going to talk to people on the other side, the phones lit up. The uh, producer that was there that was w working with us had a big eyed look in his in, in his eyes and was like, holy crap, we're getting calls. How could that be? So we got a bunch of calls for Kim Miller and the show was off and running. We had a bunch of different guests. And in fact, the, one of my coworkers, because I was still in restaurant management, or well, I was still in at this point, I was a district sales manager for U.S. Food Service. And one of my coworkers came to me and said, was that you on the radio last night? I said, uh, who wants to know? And he was like, well, I heard you as I was going through Tacoma, and it was very interesting what you were talking about. I'm very interested in finding out more. And so he became a regular listener of positive, or excuse me, of, of uh, Spirit Talk. And uh, um, we started doing that, and we did that for several months. And then cracks began to appear in our little uh, uh, entourage. First of all, I was just taken with doing radio. I, re I, had been, I had been an actor in my past. I had been a DJ in my past. And I really, really liked the format and liked talking with people on the radio and asking questions and and I've always been inquisitive by inquisitive by nature and so I really enjoyed it I enjoyed the time and it was really a lot of fun and um, at one point well and and then the next thing that happened was Mark and I had a bit of a falling out he was deeply involved with this metaphysical shop th that was operation that was in operation in Kent. And I was a little put off by um, some of the things that they were doing. And in, more than that, I was trying to grow the brand. And so I was going to other places to try and solicit support for the show. And they didn't like the fact that I was doing that, even though they weren't buying any advertising. And Mark took their position that, no, they don't have to. And and you should uh, be loyal to them and not be going after other folks. But I needed to make my investment back because I was the one that was paying the money. <coughs> so, ultimately, we ended up uh, uh, parting ways. And uh, I continued with the show and continued to uh, develop and work with other guests and other folks that I was meeting. I was meeting some incredible people some really spiritual, some real spiritual-minded people, and and was having a really good time doing it. Well, on about this time, my boss found out that I was doing a radio show. Not only was I doing a radio show, I was doing a spiritually-minded radio show. And he didn't feel, he, he pretty much told me that it was going to be a conflict of interest if I continued to do that show and work for U.S. Food Service. But at the same time, what was happening, and see, this is, in my mind, this is serendipity. And this is, this is how the universe works. At the same time, well, actually, let me take that back. I was working for Alliant Food Service. 
And uh, um, at that time, U.S. Food Service came in and decided to buy Alliant Food Service. So Alliant Food Service was no, going to be no longer. And uh, it was at the end of the year. And my boss had told me that he needed me to quit the show. And I didn't want to quit the show. I wanted to expand the show. I wanted to do more. So, um, as it turns out, U.S. Food Service came in and, and, and bought Alliant, and they then were going to move the operation to Portland. And we had a great big meeting on a Friday, and a bunch of people got their slips that they were going to be terminated, let go. And, and, in, and in that piece of paper was going to be their terms of dismissal. And I was one of the ones that they decided to keep because my job is one that they needed. I was a district sales manager. So they decided they were going to keep me. But I didn't want to work out of Portland. I didn't want to work for, and as it turns out, <laughs> the guy that was going to be in charge, I'd worked with in a previous restaurant life, and I thought he was an ass. And he was not a nice person. And he wasn't somebody that I was going to be willing to work for. So... The universe provided me with a simple out. I could get out of that at the same time as expand the radio show. Now, also at the same time, KKNW, 1150 AM out of Bellevue, was changing their format. They had been a CNN formatted station. So they played CNN news all the time. And they were going to flip it to a block programming station with CNN news at the top of the hour. And so I just happened, oh, I know, I just happened to call KKNW and say, do you have block programming available? And the salesperson I talked to said, well, you know, interesting that you should say that. We are at the first of the year in January flipping our format to a all block pro programming station. It's going to be um, a, uh, a progressive station and that uh, um, one of the first people to sign on was a show called Contact Talk Radio, which is kind of like the Art Bell show, only a little bit more spiritual than that. And they were going to do two hours a day, five days a week. And so I said uh, to them, well, you know, I would be interested in occupying that. How much would it cost? And they said, well... It's going to be $175 an hour, but keep in mind, this is in Bellevue, with a, and it's a 10,000-watt station, so it's double the reach, and uh, um, it's in Seattle proper. Problem with KLAY is they're strong in Tacoma, but very weak in Seattle. So I thought to myself, self, you know, I think that would be, I could because that way I would have bigger reach, I could sell more advertising, bigger station and I would have five days a week two hours a day could I fill that could I make it work and I, I really thought at that time that I could make that whole program work and plus the fact that if I had 24 minutes of advertising to sell at 50 bucks an hour I could make more than enough money and take care of my family and uh, provide a really good um, information base for people who are of a spiritual nature and to explore things that we hadn't explored before, kind of like Star Trek. So, you know, we, I, I, I decided that, that I would pursue that. Well, at the same time, Alliant was bought by U.S. Food Service, and they came in, swooped in, and uh, um, so I had a decision to make. And so... <laughs> I'm sitting in the office of the Alliant general manager. And in walks the U.S. Food Service um, um, human resources guy. And I say, sit down, sir. And so he sits down and I say, hey, look, here's the deal. I don't want to work for U.S. Food Service and I don't want to work for the uh, uh, vice president of sales. But I want unemployment. And he said, oh, no, we don't, we don't do that. We don't give you unemployment. And I said, well, here's the thing. Let me explain where I'm coming from. 
you just gave a letter to a guy who has been working with First Craft and then Alliant Food Service for the last 20 years. You just let him go. Now, in order to let him go, you have to give him a year's severance and two years benefits. So here's what I'm proposing. You let me go. Give me, don't fight me on uh, unemployment benefits. And then you keep this guy. And you will save a ton of money and will probably have a better employee. Failure to do that and get your commitment on that today, I'm not leaving. I will stay and hang out. But you won't have my commitment. So you get to pick. What? What? <laughs> the the uh, general manager of Alliant was standing there. His jaw was on the uh, table because he he just it, it it was just he'd never heard of such a thing. He'd never heard of somebody act like that. And uh, so uh, the, the guy, <laughs> the, the human resources guy, looked at me and he goes, "I'll be back in a minute." And he came back and he said, it's a deal. So I was able to get out of working for a lion and get uh, a cushion of unemployment benefits uh, so that I could pursue my dream of doing the radio show. Now, the radio show originally was called Spirit Talk because we were going to talk all about spirit. We were going to talk and, and, you know... <laughs> In hindsight, we probably should have done a, a bit more uh, uh, research because in other markets, Spare Talk is kind of a uh, religious right uh, uh, Christian show. And that's not what we were about at all. We were about uh, metaphysical stuff and energy and and all of those things. So, we signed, so I went and signed the contract with uh, KKNW, brought some friends that I had developed from KLAY, and we began doing the show five days a week, two hours a day. Keep in mind that at this point in time, I had no advertising, none. The show was costing me $1,000 a week just of, out of my own pocket to do this show. And many of the shows that you've listened to that are on this uh, podcast came from those days. I did not have any advertising at all. Now, over time, now, because of, of, of constraints and all that stuff, I've, I've taken out all the advertising that I had at that time because most of those people are no longer in business or, if, you know, that was 15 years ago. So uh, I've taken all of that away. But, but bear in mind, I had no advertising money at all. All of that was coming from my um, home equity loan. Make a long story short, what you're hearing on these broadcasts, which I dearly love, and, and I've been listening to them right along with you, they are really, really good. And some of the information on them is just spot on. And I'm going to continue to do that as well as provide new information and to meet more people as this podcast grows. And you can help me with this, making this podcast grow. So I hope you'll do that, and you will listen, and you will follow, and you will do and tell your friends and everything about this podcast because I think it's really, really vital. Now, over the course of time, I've learned a tremendous amount over the last 20 years. I've learned that people are people. Whether they're spiritual people, psychic people, deaf people, dumb people, they're all people. And some of them have got great things to say for a little bit. And other, uh, other people have got great things to say because they, can, they think they can make a buck. And I've learned through all of that that people want to be loved. People want to be cared about. People want acceptance. And that's what I'm hoping that my independence report will create for folks and to bring into light and to continue to shine a light on it. I mean, I've, I've interviewed some of the best, some of the most interesting people, Gary Zukoff, Neil Donald Walsh, JP Patches, who was a, a perennial clown in the Northwest area for a long time. Um, um, all, all kinds of people. I've seen 
some incredible stuff. I've worked with some incredible psychics. Um, I've seen some really, and I'm going to put up another podcast just about psychics because I've seen some people do some really, really cool work. So I, I just wanted to give you guys a sense of where I come from when I put up these shows and I'm creating new shows. Do I make a nickel from any of this? No. Do I care? No. The universe has provided me with a great income. I do this as a passion. I do this because I love you. I want to help you. If there's information out there that can make your life just a little bit easier, I'm interested in finding it. So, if you know anybody who you would like to me to interview on the air that has got a similar passion, has written a book, is somebody that really, really cares about humanity, I would be interested in you contacting me. You can always contact me at kmradio at comcast.net. Yes, that's kmradio at comcast.net. Uh, to make a long story short, and you can hear this episode on the uh, podcast, I had to, at one point, I had spent every available penny plus more that I didn't have to put this show on the air. I had paid people that I couldn't afford to pay who helped me put this show on the air. And ultimately, I had to walk away because I'd spent... Hold on to you. Hold on to yourself. I'd spent well over $100,000 to bring these shows to the air because I truly believed in their message. And their message is love. Their message is peace. Their message is we are all one. And it cost me. It cost me my marriage. It cost me my house. It cost me a relationship with an enormous number of people who thought I was stupid. But I have to tell you, as I've been creating this podcast and going back over the archives of the shows that I did as Positive Talk, as as Spirit Talk, as Kevin McDonald Presents, all of that It was, they are, some of them are just magical. They are really, really good. And the information provided is top notch. Now, I can't say that about all of them because at some point, my original premise was, see, in block programming, what you do, the idea is you buy the time and then you sell the time in blocks to other people who then talk about their potion or their thing that they're doing and uh, um, so that you can make money and pay yourself back. I didn't want to do that. I wanted the show to survive on the merits of people listening and telling other people and the show growing and it becoming a phenomenon. Well, unfortunately, the, (laughs) the intersection of money and 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 lack thereof because every day every week the station wanted to be paid so whether or not i sold anything that week they still wanted their 2000 bucks and so over time it became impossible it it became untenable so i did end up having to sell my soul to a little bit to try and make ends meet and it was too little too late and it wasn't something that I really wanted to do I really wanted to create a show that people that was pure that had great people that were also pure unfortunately what I found out is there's only a small portion of those and most of them are interested in selling something selling a book Selling a potion, selling a lecture, selling themselves, selling something. Everybody's in to sell something. And I was trying to get away from that, but as it turns out, I couldn't do it. But the beautiful thing is, the technology has now arrived where I can sit in my bedroom 
<laughs> I can uh, reconstitute these episodes that has some great information in them. And I can do it and it doesn't cost me a lot of money. And so that's what my independence report is all about. I want to thank you for listening. Now you know a little bit more about why I do what I do and why I did what I did and what it's cost me. But you know, at the end of the day, my kids still love me. I have a great job. The universe has smiled on me. And everything is coming up roses. And I know that this podcast is also going to come up roses, not from a necessarily a financial standpoint. I'm not interested in making because I've got a good job and a good living and my uh, retirement is assured. I'm not interested in making money from this podcast. I'm interested in getting great information out to people so that they can determine for themselves how to live their lives. And I hope that's you. I hope that you'll spend the time to listen to some of these shows. I've taken the time to listen to them all, and uh, they all have my stamp of approval. And I really, really appreciate you listening. And I hope that you'll, regardless of what country you're from, and, you know, I have to tell you, this podcasting thing is cool. Because when I was on the radio, it was only, I could only touch people in the Seattle area. I have touched people in um, like 40 states and, and 25 countries who have listened to this information of these podcasts and these incredible people. So it, it is because we don't get the benefit of the 50,000 foot view. And briefly, I'll explain what that is. 50,000 foot view is when you pull back See, all we get is the is the, the, the ground view, the, the ground level view where we, we can see the trees in front of us, the trees in, behind us, and we can see a little bit around us. When you pull back to the 50,000 foot view, you can not only see where we were, but you can also see where we're going. And this podcast is part of my 50,000 foot view from 15 years ago. I now can see where I'm going and where I'm going is to help you help yourself live more authentically live more really if that's even a word and and to really get the most out of life I'll be doing more podcasts about about life after death and, and, and a myriad of subjects that I'm interested in that I've learned a lot about. But for the moment, I just want to say thank you. You now understand where my passion is, where my desire is, and why I'm doing what I'm doing. And uh, I hope you share it with me. I hope you share this with your friends. Because as pure <laughs> as, pure as I can be, which isn't necessarily totally pure, but it's as pure as I can be because I am human after all. This is my gift to the world. And I hope that you will continue to stay with me and we grow together and you, if I do nothing else, all I implore you to do is to do your own research, come up with a reason why you want to know more. That this is, it's not enough. We need, you need to find out more about who you really are. And with that, I just want to say thanks again. You're listening to My Independence Report. And remember, take care of each other. Because each other is all we've got. Love you. Have a great night. And take care from My Independence Report.